The AR9, basically the pistol caliber version of the AR15, pretty tricky for the average purchaser. A little bit like booze or chili, there's a lot of ways to make it. Some will be good, others will turn your butthole inside out like you're a petting zoo goat. The cheapest way out, Hormel Vegetarian, Steel Reserve, or building out a cheap, complete AR-15 lower with a mag block adapter and a poverty tier 9mm AR-15 upper slapped on top. But don't say I didn't warn you about that. Not all AR-9s are created equally. Far from it. But going the cheap route is actually a pretty smart self-defense tactic because if you accost some rapscallion with your Anderson Arms at 9mm AR-15, he's probably going to assume you have nothing he wants and he'll just leave you alone with your shame and probably your collection of half-empty piss jugs. When you look for a good AR-9, recognize that pistol caliber ARs use different operating systems among each other and different than the rifle caliber AR-15. The AR-15 uses a direct impingement gas operating system designed for rifle-powered rounds, not pistol calibers. AR-15s are built with buffer tubes like this that house a huge recoil spring, and you don't really need a buffer tube the size of a Cracker Barrel Country Summer Sausage to operate this, a glorified 9mm pistol. It's way too much runway, it commits you to a longer overall length and no option to fold. The gun we're looking at today, the MDP-9, uses a mechanical delay blowback device, meaning we can use, if we want, a buffer tube or any other folding stock on here because we don't need a recoil spring and a buffer in the buffer tube like you would with a cheap-ass straight blowback AR-9. Does that make sense? Your standard AR-9 will be just a straight blowback design that will use this buffer tube with a buffer and a recoil spring in it. By straight blowback, I mean that there's nothing that mechanically stops the rearward travel of the bolt when the gun's firing. You pull the trigger, gun goes off, bolt starts working its way backwards, that's it. There are some upsides to blowback, including lower cost and a more simple design, but the downside is more felt recoil. There are manufacturers like B&T and Beretta who actually make bufferless 9mm pistol caliber carbines that use a straight blowback design, but they're engineered from the ground up, modified and tuned without a buffer tube, not just bolted onto an AR-15 lower. And boutique blowback PCCs like that usually deliver reduced recoil over a straight blowback through other means. But the mechanical delay device is usually a much better choice for a carbine. And for many operators and civilians alike, the gold standard is, of course, the H&K MP5 back there and its roller delayed blowback system. Rather than explain a roller delayed blowback system in detail for the 100th time on TFB TV, just go to Wikipedia. More or less, you've got a couple little metal skateboard wheels that keep the bolt locked up into the chamber for the briefest amount of time, allowing the bolt and the bolt carrier group to be lighter weight and to absorb some of that recoil. Oversimplified, this means that the bolt and bolt carrier group, they're lighter, they absorb some of the recoil so you don't have to. And as you'll see in this video, this isn't a bunch of shit I just made up. It really does work. Most of you out there know the MP5 is one of the softest shooting pistol caliber carbines in the game, full auto or semi-auto, and this is in no small part due to its roller delayed blowback system. The catch with true roller delayed blowback systems is that they're substantially more expensive to produce, at least in first world countries, than straight blowback guns. There's more engineering involved with getting the bolt locking and unlocking timed correctly, finer machining, substantially more complicated bolts, bolt heads, bolt carrier groups, not to mention that many components have to be built from scratch because you're no longer talking about like a Franken gun AR9 made out of spare AR15 parts that already exist. Taking the two same quality guns, a roller delayed blowback version can cost $1,000 or more than the exact same gun in simple blowback. How do I know this? Well, Angstat's kind of done it already. Today, we're talking about the new Angstat MDP-9 AR-9. I assume a number of you have no idea who Angstat Arms is, but they did in fact compete for the Army's first submachine gun solicitation since the Grease Gun in World War II. The SCW are the subcompact weapon competition. B&T's APC-9K, coincidentally a Swiss straight blowback that cost about as much as the MDP-9, ultimately won the contest, but Angstat competed with a gun they called the SEW-9, which was also a straight blowback design, albeit with a redesigned bolt carrier and a buffer tube system that made the gun more compact than your average AR-9. 
After that, they started making the civilian UDP-9, almost the same gun as the MDP-9, just in straight blowback. At $1,349, the UDP-9 costs about half as much as the $2,700 MDP-9. The bottom line is, if a roller delay blowback system means nothing to you, you don't care about a little bit of extra recoil and a simple straight blowback, and you'd rather get a less expensive gun, the MDP-9, probably not for you. But, watch this slow motion video from my buddy Nick Chen from the Firearm Blog. Here, you can see that shooting the straight blowback UDP-9, and then shooting the same gun in a roller delayed model, the MDP-9, results in considerably less felt recoil. So if I still have you with this video at $2,700, let's talk about the specs and features. Yeah, $2,700, it approaches MP5 range in price, but there are some advantages over the MP5 with the MDP-9. This is a 9mm pistol caliber carbine that's mostly aluminum, meaning it weighs just 3.5 pounds empty, nearly half the weight of the MP5. It's only 14 inches long without a stock or with the stock folded. It comes with two 27 round Magpul. P mags for the Glock and it accepts cheap Glock 9mm double stack magazines, not $75 MP5 mags. Interestingly, you better make sure that you keep your magazines clean because although the roller delayed blowback system is very reliable, Angstat says that the most common cause of failure in the MDP9 are dirty magazines and we ran into the same issue when we had this gun out on the range. We had one specific magazine that was giving us the occasional failure. We called Angstat, they told us, hey look, make sure that your magazine follower, what a random thing, make sure your magazine follower is clean. Turns out that was the issue. The MDP-9 upper is great because it's not a cobbled together AR upper or a steel MP5 upper receiver with a plastic handguard, no optic rail. Instead, the MDP-9 is pretty state of the art. It's a monolithic block of 7075 T6 aluminum with a continuous top Picatinny rail for optics m lock slots at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, and two QD sling points up front. It also has a non-reciprocating and be swappable forward charging handle. The upper is designed to work with most Glock Mag AR9 lowers, but the MDP's lower features a flared mag well, extended mag release, and a threaded bolt catch screw, along with a B5 systems grip, so it's pretty nice. Yes, also, the bolt will hold open on the last round of the magazine, too, unlike the MP5 or other cheap AR9s. The MDP9 uses a mil-spec AR15 fire control group, meaning it's compatible with most aftermarket 9mm AR9 triggers. The barrel's 6 inches long, melanided, and threaded half by 28 with a removable 3-lug muzzle device for use with tri-lug quick-attach suppressors. The MDP9 is made in the U.S. So by now you know that the MDP-9 takes Glock magazines, and if you don't know that, has your wife ever told you you don't listen to her? I'd forget about it, she's probably wrong. So Glock mags, this is gonna cause a little bit of ass pain among many people. On one hand, it sounds great. Glock mags are cheap, reliable, easy to find. You can also share magazines with your handgun and your carbine, which is awesome. But the biggest downside is the fact that they're double stacked single feed, meaning you have to depress the round that's already in the magazine, whenever you're loading a new round on top of it, that can be a huge pain in the ass, especially when the magazine starts getting full. Compare that to what's called a double stack double feed magazine, like say an Uzi, where it requires very little pressure to just snap rounds in. Think about like loading an AR-15 magazine. Also, smaller PDWs and SMGs, straight magazines are often preferred over angle magazines because straight mags give you more room to work than angled magazines and they're easier to insert, especially if you're kitted up in a plate carrier or whatever you've got going on. That's the primary reason why Beretta used a straight mag for their PMX submachine gun. Glock mags are also awkward for carbines because they have mag release notches at the front of the magazine body, meaning that your magazine release has to work like a seesaw because you activate a button behind the magazine to open a latch in front of the magazine, as you can see here. Many Glock mag carbines suffer from stiff or just straight up shitty mag releases as a result, but fortunately the MDP-9s is pretty fantastic. There's another significant reason why Angstat went with Glock magazines. Their goal was to make this PDW as small and light as possible while still being roller delayed blowback. It's only three and a half pounds, it's shockingly thin, and according to Angstat, the only way they could do this was by using Glock magazines. Initially, 
Angstad had a plan to use MP5 compatible parts like MP5 bolt carriers, bolt heads, magazines, but they quickly discovered that this meant the gun would have to be heavier, thicker, bulkier. Accordingly, they stuck with their own proprietary bolt system and Glock mags, which I think was the right call here. Let's be honest, while MP5 parts compatibility would have been really awesome, it isn't like anyone's handing out MP5 magazines and bolt carrier groups like those naked hooker cards you get at SHOT Show. MP5 mags have steadily increased in price over the past couple of decades, and a complete HK MP5 bolt carrier group? Frickin' forget about it. That's upwards of $1,000 right now. Of course, since the MDP9 uses a roller delay blowback system, it doesn't need to have a buffer tube, even though, of course, I have one on here just for purposes of the stock. That means you can use whatever stock or brace you want. The MDP-9 has this Picatinny rail attachment at the back, like the MPX, meaning you can put on nearly whatever folding, collapsing, fixed stock, whatever you want, and it's got a QD sling socket at the back of the receiver if you would prefer that instead. We were all impressed with the fit and finish of this gun. It really feels like a premium, top tier gun, like for example, a B&T. On top of that, it's lighter, more modern, more features than a standard MP5. But now that we've gone over the specs and design, how'd it shoot? To find out, we brought it to the best shooting facility in the West, Thunder Ranch. Four round center, four round center, stand by, up! Good, think about driving the gun. Get your I ran the MDP9 for a half day of Clint Smith's world famous urban rifle carbine course, like I did with the Aero EPC-9, another AR-9 a year or two ago. Thank God Clint wasn't on the range this time because I know exactly what he would say. He'd say, James, get a pistol, get a rifle, quit dicking around in the middle ground. At least that's what he said to me constantly the last time I had an AR-9 on his range. And thank God Hertz rent -a car wasn't on the range either because they wouldn't have appreciated the scattered brass and me almost busting a cap in our GMC terrain side view mirror. I mean, that's the funny thing about South Central Oregon. You have no idea when a tiny meteorite or other fortuitous projectile, certainly covered by the lost damage waiver, will hit your vehicle's rear view mirror. No way to know when these freak acts of God will take place. Dude. It's like, I'm going to shoot that fucking rear view mirror. We put the MDP-9 through its paces. I shot it suppressed, unsuppressed with Glock mags and Magpul mags, supersonic, subsonic ammo, frangible, non-frangible ammo, 9mm ammunition ranging from ultralight 70 grain frange up to 147 grain subsonics. As you can see from the slow motion here, the MDP-9 delivered on recoil. Only three and a half pounds, but super light shooting. That made the MDP-9 a breeze for ready up drills inside of 50 feet, where I put two whole magazines into a fist size group from a cold start with a Holosun 509T pistol optic that hadn't been zeroed. Follow up shots were fast and easy, keeping everything tight down range, and the MDP-9 punched out noticeably smaller groups than everyone else on the line using high-end AR-15s with better optics at the same range. So not only is it easy recoiling, but like its distant cousin, the MP5, the MDP-9 handled phenomenally suppressed. I've been using the Dead Air Primal a lot lately. It's like a jack-of-all-trades can. It's rated for everything up to 458 SOCOM, meaning that it works with the 38 caliber diameter 9mm round with plenty of room to spare. I mentioned that the MDP-9, the muzzle device that's on here is three lug compatible, so you can quick attach, quick detach a suppressor, just like you guessed it, the MP-5. This is my favorite way of attaching a suppressor, at least on a pistol caliber carbine, because all it takes is a little bit of downward pressure and a quarter twist to mount, the same procedure backwards to remove it. Quick and easy. I'd suggest maybe thread locking this muzzle device to the barrel if you're going to use a tri-lug mount all the time. Otherwise, it very well could come off with repeated use. The Primal uses standard rear suppressor body threads, meaning that you can pick up a tri-lug adapter for it or other suppressors and use it on your MP5, your MDP9, whatever else you have with a three-lug mount. I picked up the Dead Air Primal, all the mounting hardware from Silencer Shop. You guys know Silencer Shop has sponsored TFB TV in the past, so please give them some love if you're thinking about picking up a Primal. They usually have the best prices and service on this stuff anyway, so it's kind of a no-brainer. 
Now the trick with oversized universal type suppressors like the Primal is they use a hot dog down the hallway internal baffle diameter that's significantly larger than the projectile in many cases. That means that they typically don't suppress as well as say a dedicated 9mm suppressor. Nonetheless, the Primal's done very well for me in the past shooting 5.56, 300 blackout, and 9. Still, it didn't sound so great shooting 70 grain frangible. But 124 grain and lighter 9mm is almost always supersonic. It moves faster than the speed of sound, which creates a small sonic boom after it exits the suppressor. This means that light 9mm isn't going to sound good out of any suppressor. Fortunately, I also got my hands in some 147 grain subsonic rounds and that shit hit softer than Michael Bolton on Ambien. Listen to how good it sounded. And if you listen hard, you can hear the bullet impact about 150 yards downrange. Just listen. Check it out. Beautiful. You gotta love it. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I recommend newer Glock magazines with the MDP-9. It wasn't fussy, but we had a clapped out dirty magazine that would occasionally cause a failure. It also wouldn't lock back on the last round with that same mag. All of the newer magazines, including these Magpul magazines that came with the gun, function perfectly. I noticed that the non-reciprocating charging handle was at somewhat of an awkward angle in relation to the sling mount. You see, this is a, uh, a mild, it seems like this mounting point is like a mild anti-swivel. It'll let you move like a little bit, but you can see it'd be really easy for that to interfere with the charging handle, especially if you put it in at the wrong angle like this. So just something to be mindful of because that will definitely get in the way of trying to sling that charging handle. But you know, that's not a big deal and you're not working with a lot of real estate, so what else can you do? So is the MDP-9 for you? As with a lot of the guns that I review on TFB TV, this one's absolutely fantastic. I have very few complaints, but it's a $2,700 pistol caliber carbine that costs more than a Daniel Defense AR-15. Of course I'm gonna love it because it's a premium, well-made, expensive firearm, but you can make a flow chart for the MDP-9 and you. Our flow chart would be, do you want a pistol caliber carbine? Yes. Would you be willing to spend $2,500 or more for a roller delay blowback pistol caliber carbine, smaller and lighter recoiling than a regular cheaper blowback AR9? Yes. Do you like the H&K MP5, but do you want something lighter, more modern, with a monolithic upper, continuous optic rail, M-lock slots for accessory mounting, last round bolt hold open, and the ability to accept inexpensive and plentiful magazines compatible with your sidearm? Yes. <laughs> if you answered yes to all of those things, good news, the MDP-9 is for you. Bad news, that's probably 2% of you at most watching this video. So I worry about a small company like Angstat taking on a little niche market that's pretty much only inhabited by the MP5. Yeah, there are less expensive mechanically delayed blowback options out there like the CMMG Banshee and the Strybog, but the CMMG isn't roller delayed and frankly the Strybog isn't on the same quality level as the Angstat. Plus, there aren't many people willing to spend over $1,000 on a pistol caliber carbine anyways, but if they did, they might get an MPX from SIG, the H&K, the BNT, the Beretta. What I'm trying to say is that for purposes of this review and on paper, the Angstat MDP-9 is arguably the best PCC on the market right now. But at the same time, you can't ignore the reality of the industry, and that is that this market segment is occupied by established longtime players with military and law enforcement contracts, as well as cheap-ass budget build manufacturers, both of whom will tackle most of the market before they get to the MDP-9's end zone. The MDP-9 just dropped a couple weeks ago. There were a few dozen available at Angstat site in black. FDE Stealth Gray Cerakote finishes. Rich Angstat, the owner of the company, solid dude. I've known this guy for several years now. Great guy who makes a quality product, so I'm hoping that, in spite of the harsh, 
competitive landscape in the PCC market right now, the MDP9 finds its way into some of your safes, your range bags, or even your patrol cars. Guys, thanks a ton as usual for watching the video. Would you like to possibly win a free gun and support us? We don't take money from Angstad. In fact, I got to send this son of a bitch back tomorrow, but we get by because of viewer support. So we need you guys. Get on Patreon, Utreon, or Subscribestar. If you're on Utreon or Subscribestar at the $5 level or higher, you are automatically entered to win one of four free guns that we give away every single month. So make sure you go and check that out. Check the rules here, tfbtv.gun.team. But I'm just glad you're watching. Thanks as usual. Take care. Thank mm -hmm. you.